Good morning, folks. Today we've got space weather, earthquakes, plate motions possibly changing, space weather and health, and some global electric circuit near storm clouds. But let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours quite calm once again. You might notice there are no sunspots or solar flares and no large ejections, but the dark coronal holes have indeed taken their effect on the solar wind. Here at Earth, the stream is intensified for the third straight day, but geomagnetic disruptions remain somewhat tame, generally unstable, but no storm conditions. There may be more from this system, but even if there isn't, the next one on the north is turning in so close behind them, there will barely be any time between their effects. Eyes on it. We had two big quakes yesterday, and I want to show the raw readings. Two 6.3s for this one, and then a bunch of magnitude 5s, and then... For an earthquake that struck a few hours earlier, nothing reading in the 5 range, and the most common reading is actually up at 6.8. So, how does the USGS see those two different quakes? Somehow being the exact same size, 6.3. Talk about losing some faith in the data analysis there. Let's move on now to an excellent confirmation of the space weather health connection to blood pressure variability. Also nice to once again see high solar activity and ultra-low activity, aka cosmic ray events, playing a role in the observations. So folks, this could be big. The last global survey of plate motion was in 2011. Those are the red lines. The 2018 survey shows something different in direction in 30 of the 33 sites. Australia really doesn't look all that changed compared to the rest of the world when we zoom out. You'll notice that some of the regions have the velocity profile switching directions 90 degrees. That is much more than the slightly off angle we see for other areas, and it begs the question as to how so many confirmed observations over years could change in such a short time. Up next, a terrific paper on the global electric circuit effect from an observer's standpoint near a thunderstorm. There is a positive anomaly spike during the growth phase of the clouds, various anomalies during the life stages and passage of the system, and then in the wake of the storm where light drizzle persists and the thunder gets fainter and fainter, there is a profound negative anomaly. Just an FYI. Lastly, folks, paper number 7 million on the electroquake topic. I kid, of course, but not about the scientific discovery. If you have missed more than the hundred others on this topic or our recent electroquake video, it is linked right below this one. Check it out and add today's Electroquake story on top of it. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.